So in the last video, we made this pattern, we traced everything out, we take we took this from uh, a real garment measurements, and now this is ready for us to simulate. So, so I'm just going to actually save this scene as it is now. So if I ever want to come back to this draft, I can do that. And then I'm just going to save another copy, call it two, and then save that as well. So now I have an old version and a new version of this file. I'm going to delete this draft base page that we had before because I don't need it anymore. I've got everything I need from it. And then I'm going to press shift and Z to turn off those measurements because they are in the way. Um, let's just lay this out ready to simulate in the workspace. So this color pattern will go on this side, this sleeve here, this like this. Uh, right. If we look quickly at what we have here, put the opacity back up. I've got some crazy things going on because I've merged and joined a lot of these pieces. So if I press Control and A, right click and reset to the arrangement, my patterns look a lot more like they should do. So let's make symmetrical copies of the body. Actually, first deactivate this color. Deactivate everything and just leave it there. These guys you can make a symmetrical pattern with. And just copy them across. Okay. So now two sleeves, two fronts, two backs. Let's move the front panels a little closer in and lift them up. And the back panels, let's flip around and bring them around to the back, ready to simulate. I think the sleeves as well, we can just deactivate for a second. And bring this to the back. Right. I'm just going to quickly stitch this together in the uh, 2D space. So the center back to the center back, center front to the center front, side seams, shoulder seams. For now, that's everything. Then let's simulate. So far, so good. Let's just check the fabric preset here because I don't think there is one. No. Let's change this. The shirt was denim originally, but I'm going to make it in a cotton or like an actual shirt. So let's do cotton twill. Right. So far, this looks pretty fine, I think. We might need to drop the front a little bit. What we want to check for at this point is like, do we have a weird shape happening on the front and the back and I think kind of okay for now let's add the sleeves in so I'm going to turn off the simulation then let's do the front sleeve first I think the easiest way to do sleeves is just sew the armhole simulate and then sew the underseam so let's do one at a time to make life easier the front armhole, and then the back. And then this needs to be deactivated again. Right. So let's simulate this sleeve. And then stitch the underarm. Okay. Now, instead of wrapping all this around again, what we can do is just delete that copy that we made, make a new symmetrical pattern, and it will show up exactly where our arm is draped, and then we just simulate again. So, a little bit of pitching happening here. So, let's just check the sewing on this. I'm just going to drop the particle distance because I think that's making this look chunky as well. So let's select everything, go from 20 to 12, and then just simulate this again. So when I'm talking about what to look for at this point, there's a little bit of kind of this tent shape happening, which we might be able to fix if we look at the patterns again. 
The side seam is pretty straight. If I look at this straight from the side, it's kind of going straight down, but we probably want it to go more like this and the front hang more forward. If you see now, this is naturally kind of pulling a little bit forwards. So the easiest way to solve this is to go through the front of our pattern. So use this slash and spread tool here. Go from a higher kind of point in the armhole up here, go straight across the front, lift this up a little bit, maybe six millimeters, 0 0.75 centimeters. And then we just need to fix it quickly. Because if you look now, our center front goes straight and then it goes like that. And we want to just bring this back over. So let's just select those points and the neck and just drag them back into alignment. We can then select these two points and delete them so that we've just got one straight line in the front. And then if we simulate again, it won't be much, but if we look now, our side seam it should be hanging straighter. So because there wasn't much difference, if you think there's a little swing in the front, that's just what we want to drop back in the neck, down the front to make it sit back again. So that's fine. The only other thing is this neck hole looks really tight. And if I'm honest, when I wear this garment, it doesn't feel like there's enough neck in the back. So we might want to drop the back neck down a little bit in the on the pattern here. So let's just take this down maybe about eight millimeters, maybe. And simulate this again. It might also benefit us to have a little bit more length in the back of this pattern here, because right now this is quite sharp. So we want here a nice smooth curve in the, the neck hole. So let's just add a bit into the center back. So I'm going to take the center back and just move this out a bit so that I have more space around the back of the garment and more space for it to hang around my neck, like down the front and it not fall off the back. So let's come out a little bit, maybe 0 0.5 centimeters. Cause you think that this measurement is doubled. Like if I put 0 0.5 here, just going back in a little bit. Then I've got 0 0.5 on the other side, so I'm adding a whole centimeter down the back, which is actually quite a lot of fabric when you see it in reality. Clo can make things seem very small, so like don't make drastic changes when you drafted your pattern out ready to go. Uh, the only other thing is this front shape. I think I just want to drop this front neck a little bit more as well. Okay, so in general, this is looking pretty good. Let's just change the preset of this fabric to uh, the voile. Let's see how this simulates. Right, I think this is looking fine. It's looking oversized, which is the point. The avatar should be the right size for my height, so I'm good with that. Then let's start to simulate the uh, collar. So let's just check our measurements because we've changed the neck opening and the back neck a little bit now. So let's check our measurements here. So the front is 15 and the back is 11.39. So let's just make the stand wider. So I'm bringing the center back out until I have 11.3 here to like fit this piece of the stand here, like into my back neck opening. And then around here, this needs to be 15. So 15.1. So I've got nine and a half, 10 and a half, 11 and a half, 12, 13, 14. We've actually got about 15 in here already. So this will fit in and then we can check in the sewing how far off we are. Uh, let's bring this down a little bit. I want a nice kind of curve happening up here. Right. 
So this is the center back. So it's going to fit into this side of the garment over here. So this point here is the shoulder point. So we can even put a notch in here. So remember it's the shoulder. And then let's just stitch from here all the way to the front and here all the way to the front. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing we should probably add in the correct construction in the front. So let's just actually undo that and pause on the color for one second. So let's look back at this measurement page here. We've got a button overlap in the front and the top overlap is 3.2. And then underneath there's just a fold and a stitch. So like there's a panel added on the front here to make this nice construction in the front. And then underneath we've just got a fold like this. So here there's this top applied piece that's stitched through. Here there's just this fold under that's about 2.5 centimeters. So we're gonna have to extend our center front to accommodate this. So if our full placket is 3.2 centimeters, that's 1.6 on each side. So I'm gonna offset an internal line at 1.6. Oh, that's the number of offsets. This looks different. Um, where was I? 1.6. One offset, 1.6 extended. Right. Now we have this uh, button placket. But visually the width is right but now you need to extend this pattern forward so just select your front edge click extend pattern outline where is that ah, offset pattern outline and it wants to again be by 1.6 centimeters okay then let's just unstitched all of this front because now it is not stitched correctly because we have this now touching edge to edge rather than with the overlap so let's delete that and then look quickly at this here so i now have an extension coming on the front and an extension coming on the back and this point should stitch to this point and that should be how our garment overlaps okay so now simulating this, we have our garment overlapping in the center front and our neck hole still looks pretty nice and pretty correct. So now we've got that, we can actually start to fit in this um, collar stand. So let me just delete these two points and make this a lot smoother. So we have 15 to where the placket starts, um, to where the center front is, and then we have another 1.6 coming off uh, to, to the front edge of the garment. So I need to just bring this out by maybe another 1.6 centimeters, about 1.35, right. And what that should mean now is if I stitch from here all the way to my center front, to the front edge, um we can see our difference in the measurement so my neck opening all the way to the front edge and including the center front is 16.7 and here it's 16.13 so i can curve this a little longer and let's just bring this out by another few millimeters so you see now we're starting to get this shaping on our collar stand which you see is happening here okay the back neck should be simpler so from here like this let's stitch this stand in so i'm going to activate this piece i'm going to rotate it around the side of the neck like this way and i'm just going to place it there and then simulate so you see now, because the back part is straight, this sits straight up here, straight up towards the neck like this, okay? When the front starts to be curved, it will allow the stand to sit up more, which is, means we've not got quite enough curve in the front here. So we can start to curve this in a little bit more and we might even wanna put a little bit of curve at this point as well so that the, stand comes up this way so let's go through kind of this point here and then back around this point here so 
the, our collar stand will not be straight. It will always have this shaping to it that allows it to sit closer in towards the neck. So it comes in like this and not up like this. Let's just add a little more shaping here. And then correct this curve on top one more time. Simulate again, and we can see that this is sitting a lot nicer. If we strengthen this, we'll help us see a little better. So now we can stitch on the collar itself. So let's check the measurements that we've got here. We want to go from the start of this curve point in the front, which is kind of above where the center front is here, and then stitch it in from there. So Let's just go like this, like this. And currently the space that we're stitching this into is a little bit smaller. So this is 25.48 and this is almost 25. So there's about a half a centimeter difference. So I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. I'm just going to grab the whole thing and just make it a tiny little bit smaller. And that is almost there. It's about two millimeters off still. That 24.9 on each side. So again, let's drag the color over, uh, activate this. And our color piece should always be a lot straighter than our color stand because we want the color to just kind of sit around the color stand in a nice uh, flat way and not move out like this. So let's strengthen it. And we can put it at this angle because we want the color to sit down. And we can then add some folding to this line and then we're just going to copy it. So if I choose this seam line and I put some fold strength on it. Actually, no, let's do this in a different way. Let's fold through the, the pattern because we've got three centimeters here and then six. So if that's like nine centimeters altogether here. We want this to kind of roll in the middle, which would be about there. So let's just draw a line across our collar and see if we can get this to roll at all. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm just adding a curved roll line in here. And then if we change the fold rendering to on and we add some fold angle into it, you see now how the color is kind of rolling around where it needs to go and it should sit more or less at the bottom of the color stand here. See the top of the color here ends at the bottom of the color stand here because we've kind of rolled it in that way. We might want to drop this down a little bit just like that. Okay, then let's take both these pieces, make them symmetric again, and then stitch the back neck together. Strengthen these pieces as well. And then I'm just gonna grab one of the stands and just move it back a bit so that we don't get some crazy intersections happening here. And like that, we have the color. So if we look at our original reference, we've got a nice color. There's some space between the neck and the color to make it comfortable and it rolls around quite nicely. And I think we've got that here as well. And we can check the measurements of this, I feel like, from our original pattern. Yeah, so this should be about 45 centimeters from this point to this point. And that's kind of what we got. And this was about 52 for the neck hole. And I think that's what we've got here. Yeah, about 28. So maybe a little bit more in this, but let's see. Uh, for now, we've simulated the main body of this. We've simulated the sleeves. 
let's just take care of our yoke seam and our shoulder line. So I'll save this as it is. And then like before, I'll just save another copy. Call it three, save that. Right. The back yoke, we want to just right click and it makes sure that this is extended to the outline. So extend it. Cut and sew. That's quite simple. The yoke is now done. Now our back is hanging nice and straight. Yes. And then our front seam here, we want to cut and sew this because we like. I like that I can see this from the front of the garment, like here, this line here. So I'm just going to cut and sew that as well. And then take this line and merge it onto the back piece. And then we can just correct a little bit this neck hole shape. So it's a lot smoother. Okay. And I think this is looking pretty good. The last thing we want to do is add on the cuff and that should be easy enough for us to do. So again, the cuff comes from uh, one straight piece, which is the same as our opening. And then we're going to add the placket and add the piece underneath it. So we know that on our sleeve, the placket is going to come in seven centimeters from here. So if I split this line, right click to split, that first line, I want to be seven centimeters and my placket starts there and it's 2.5 by 13. So if I come in here, internal rectangle width 2.5 height 13 done. This can show us where our placket is going to go. And we put it on the front because we're not paying attention. So let's just split the back. The outside line should be seven. And then let's move this back to where it belongs. Right. It's on the back now. So this is our placket. The opening of it's going to be down underneath this uh, construction. So there's an overlap that happens underneath here. The, the, the binding sits underneath the placket and there'll be an overlap, which means there'll be an extension. And the, the fabric that gets extended will actually be taken into this pleat here, which is why we've got the pleat in the end. So if we look back at our pattern, maybe it's better to look on this side. Yes. I think. So we know the cuff should be 30 centimeters by 6.5. So let's start with that, right? 30 by 6.5. This is going to connect over here like this. Okay. So this part of the placket is going to open up. This will connect here and then this will wrap around and connect underneath to the, to the binding piece. The binding piece will be located less. Let's just draw some uh, seam allowances into this. So this will be stitched through kind of at this point here. So we know that there's going to be a seam allowance of about this much. And then we know that there's going to be a binding on the other side of this. So this is going to come out where our binding roughly is like, let's say like this. So it, what you would do if you were making this like with fabric, you would cut through this point and then you would bind one edge of this and you would take some of it away seam allowance, but we aren't going to take this seam allowance out. So like this will be our binding piece, right? I'm just going to join the overlapping points on that so that I've now got one shape that I can move around. Okay. I think the easiest way for us to visualize this would be if I cut this away, but we need to cut it from under here. Oh. 
So let's just put that out, right? Delete it. Then we are going to have the binding piece underneath this. So the binding would actually wrap around here and kind of come again. If I drew this in, it would come around here like this. So that would be this piece here. And then we've got the placket on the other side. So this we can then make a pattern for. So I'm just going to draw a square over this because right now it's just a square. It's just a, a rectangular shape. So we've got our placket here. And then we've got, I can convert this to a pattern. Our placket here. And then we'll deal with the cuff next. So this is going to get stitched in. Down this edge. And then around here. So let's stitch the top. And then we could even come down like this. Part like this. We can worry about this other piece in a second. So let's just look for this pattern piece, wherever he may be. And bring him to the back of the cuff. Like this. And then I'm just going to press simulate. Actually, let's freeze these guys. Nope. Freeze, and then let's just get that placket in there. Right. So you see now we've got this opening happening, and we've got the uh, the underneath side of this where the binding would go. So let's take that binding piece, and for now, I guess we can just stitch it in flat. When we convert this into like a pattern for production, I'll show you what we will do with this for. Uh, for the sake of production. Let's uh, un uh, unfreeze this and move this over here as well. I'm just going to lift that binding piece in front so we can re-simulate this all together. Uh, the placket piece uh, even, not the binding piece. Right. So let's stitch this to the internal line. Then let's stitch this like this. And then we'll just do simulate. So now the binding piece is underneath. The um, placket is on top and our overlap is now uh, working. Let me just actually strengthen both of these should make our life a little bit easier when we are trying to add the cuff so if you're getting some of this been around check your particle distance isn't too small for a start because that won't help yeah that's calmed down okay so then let's look at the cuff because our cuff is now going to start here but we've probably got too much fabric to stitch into this cuff we will it will become clear. So let's spin the cuff around and let's take this side. So if I just click on the piece, I can see with this blue point, which point I'm looking at on my uh, 2D space as well. So let's just spin that around. Right. So the cuff is going to start by connecting to the placket. And then if we look what we've got left of the cuff, you will see from the edge of the, the placket here. So like we want this point now to stitch down. So let's go all the way down. And then we want to come from here, the underside, to the edge of where the binding is to finish off the pattern. However, we are about three centimeters or two and a half centimeters off because there is um, a pleat 
because we've extended this we've added in this length here this is now longer uh adding in to, to create this overlap so let's just delete that stitching all for a second and look at how we can create a pleat so this is still going to connect here a pleat is going to happen at about this point oh, internal about this point on the cuff so let's see where we want this to start about here then if i add a point right there and then i split this line we've got two and a half centimeters too much so we want 1.25 over and then 1.25 on top so that we're folding away in total two and a half centimeters so this length becomes smaller in the pleat so if i split this by 1.25 and i split it twice i'm going to get two uh points here to, to help me make this pleat fold okay so click okay and then just draw some internal lines coming up so that it helps the simulation of this pleat happen right and we want this line to fold onto this line to shrink out some of the fabric so that we've got this little pleat in the cuff so the easiest way for us to do this is to put some fold on this to push it inwards so if i add a fold angle here um minus so that it goes small and then turn on the fold rendering i can just simulate this quickly I'm folding in the right let me just unfreeze and deactivate this cuff for a second right so the fold angle on this actually wants to be positive so that it pushes inwards right now you see we've got a little dip happening which will make this easier to sew like we have a little dip where this fold occurred so go from here the middle bit of the pleat out and then the other middle bit of the pleat out and then simulate and it should pinch this together in a nice way right now we want the direction of this it's now folding like under we want it to fold the other way so the way for us to kind of control this is if we say that we want this bit of the pattern so like if you see why that line is here to connect to this bit of the pattern so if I come, if I draw a line here of the stitching and then I come out the other way, this is pulling my pleat under and now it should sit in the right direction. And what can be quite handy is if we extend these lines a bit. So just bring this one up, this one a bit less. And just kind of stagger them a bit so that when the simulation happens it creates this nice uh fold on the wrist so now if we restitch this into the cuff so we're gonna we've already stitched the bottom end of the placket in so that's here we then want to go from here to the start of the pleat like this then we want to go from the end of the pleat all the way to the end of the arm uh the underarm and then from the underarm back to the beginning again, where the binding finishes. And I think there's about four millimeters of difference, but we can shuffle that in the pleat when we actually stitch this together, like, you know, on a sewing machine. But if I now activate this, we should have quite a good simulation on this cuff. However, just for the sake of simulating this in a much nicer way, because this is not going to wrap around very well, I'm just going to split my pattern, cut and sew, take this piece, spin it round, and let that simulate from this side. Let that simulate. Now my cuff is attached, my uh, all the placket is attached and everything, and I can just merge these lines back together. And then I can do, delete the base lines if I want, where's that? Delete all base lines so that line is gone. And then um, this looks good. 
if we want to button this up, we can just grab this part of the cuff, drag it around underneath, and then we can just put a pin in it, I think. Get that there. Can fix this little piece of binding and freeze it. And then just drag this bit of cuff around on top of here. And then we'll put a pin in it, I think. So we'll just pin from one bit of the cuff to the other as if there's a button in there. And now our cuff's done. We unfreeze the binding. And we have a nice shirt cuff. So again, we don't want to do all of those steps for this other sleeve because we've just simulated all this together. So let's delete the other side. Select our new sleeve. Clone uh, symmetric pattern with sewing. And then just hit simulate. Oh, our pin came out on that side. So let's just add another one in. So this to strengthen. Right. So this is now, a, I'd say fit and ready to go for us to start turning into a, a production ready pattern. Let me just bring the particle distance down a little bit more to about eight to get some nice simulation on this. Right, so I don't think there's any problems in this. Um, for the placket details, all of that is about uh, seam allowances and extensions. So that will be in the next video when we look at how to turn this into something that is, is ready to be like uh, industrialized. But now we have uh, sewn this shirt together. We've uh, taken it from an existing garment we know the steps to go through to uh, to trace off the pattern and now we can check that in Clo 3d to make sure that our garment looks like we want it to look and i think this looks pretty pretty good great so in the next video we'll look at how to turn this into uh, an industrialized sewing pattern